What's going on everyone, Vindy here, and today we're going to talk about the new and improved 3 pull Strathome Boost. This is by far the best boosting method from level 52 to 60. It's exactly like the original Strathome Boost, except with one limited invulnerability potion per run, you can do this boost in 3 pulls and dungeon cap it. Before we get into the video, I would like to take a quick second to apologize for my absence. For those of you who do not know, I am in the military, and due to recent events and the pandemic, I've been gone for a few months. That being said, I'm back to playing WoW and bringing the best guides as possible. Let's get back to it. Although this boost requires a consumable, you are able to clear this dungeon a lot faster, which means you can boost this dungeon more times in an hour, get more experience, and get more gold from boosties. So the payoff is well worth the one consumable you need. First, I'm going to touch on the spec I use for this pull. Then, I'm going to talk about each mage and their role for the pull. Next, I'm going to show you how to see if Skull has spawned in your instance and how you can adjust accordingly. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the pulls themselves. Let's get right into it. I'm going to just briefly touch on the farming spec I am currently using. This farming spec is a good hybrid spec. You can clone a cold farm or blizzard farm. It's good for dungeons like Maradon, Scarlet Monastery, Blackrock, Depths, and of course, Stratholme. The beauty of a Frost Mage is as long as you have key talents such as Mana Absorption, Improved Blizzard, Ice Barrier, etc. Everything else is interchangeable to spec specifically for your character and the gear that they use or the farm you're doing. Talents that are preferential include Piercing Ice, Ice Shards, Shatter, Arcane Resilience, Improved Mana Shield, Arcane Meditation, and Winter's Chill. As long as you understand the pulls and communicate well with your partner, you will have no issues with this farm. One key factor that will affect any strat farm is Skull. He's difficult enough as it is in the 5 pull, let alone in the 3 pull. One way to deal with this is when you first run in, use a spyglass from engineering. Face the wall and target Skull. If he is in your instance, then simply split the first big pull into two separate pulls like the original boost. This will prevent wiping and keep your customers happy. Just like the original pull, we are going to enter through the side gate of Stratholm into the undead side. After using the spyglass and making sure we don't have skull, the pulling mage is going to open the gate. Immediately aggro the first pack. Frost Nova this pack. Jump for increased range. Then you will run behind the chapel. Wait here until the Frost Nova falls off. After the Frost Nova falls off, run to the other side of the chapel. Fire blast the far pack and hug left while running towards the tunnel to the other half of the pull. At this point, you will blink. The pack you fire blasted will pull the remaining pack in the room. Once into the other side, Arcane Explosion, these first two packs pass the tunnel. Then you will fire blast the pack to the right, and at this point, you will use your limited invulnerability potion, and check to make sure your ice barrier is up while you face pull these two packs by the fountain. Last, you will counterspell the ghouls while face pulling the pack by the gate. Ice block immediately. If you haven't seen the original Stratholme video, make sure you check it out. In that video, I go over the tips and tricks for each pool and AoE farming Stratholme in general. It is extremely important to know the 5 pool strategy in case you get Skull. That way you can split the first pool into two separate pools and reduce your chance of wiping. Skull is a huge pain in the ass. Something different in this pool versus the original is I use Fire Blast for the pack by the chapel instead of Counterspell. Now the reason why is because you will want your counterspell for the end of this first pull. Something else extremely important is to make sure that you have a fresh ice barrier before your limited invulnerability potion runs out. Now I want to touch on something I mentioned in the original video. If you are running out of room and resources, just use the chapel to your advantage. Line of sight is your biggest friend in this pull because of all the casters. Lastly, if you miss a pack, don't worry about it. Just ice block and when you come out of ice block, pull the pack you missed. They will run right into the tank's blizzard. The biggest change in this pull of the boost is that the pulling mage will not need a free action potion. The moment the pulling mage opens the gate, they will aggro the first pack. Frost Nova, this pack. Again, jump for increased range. Then, you will fire blast the pack on your left. At this point, you will run to the right towards the furthest pack. You can Arcane Explosion or Face Pull these three packs. Blink through them as they run towards you and counterspell the far pack. Ice Block immediately. 
The biggest change between this pull and the original is you don't need a free action potion because you don't double back through the pack into the gated area. Instead, you ice block when you are by the pack closer to the courier. The downside to pulling this way is if you don't get the pack and the patrols under control, you will end up needing to go through the double gate. Now this isn't a big deal, you just need to know how to do it. So, when you are backed completely up to the gate, have the first mage start casting a rank 1. Meanwhile, the other mage will open the first gate, turn around, and start casting a blizzard. You need to start casting your blizzard before the gate closes. And then the first mage will make his way through both gates, turn around, and cast a rank 1 blizzard in between the gates. Again, you need to start casting your blizzard before the gate closes. At this point, you can go back to normal. Also, it's worth noting if you have a pack that is stretched out, just frost nova the front runners. But make sure you only nova the front runners, otherwise, you're back in the same position. Warning before you begin the last pull, be sure to clear the rats in the gates towards the live side, otherwise, you end up with this. Perfect pull, man. I'm heading towards the gate. You can head on up. All right, I'm moving up. Are you freaking kidding me? Well, we got rats again. Yeah, Are dude. You? Freaking rats. I got this, though. I got this. I mean, I can try and kill the rats, but I don't think I can do anything for you. Oh, shit. You can't get through the gate. Gosh, dang, man. For the last pull, the pulling mage will move into a position to blizzard the furthest pack by the main entrance. Blizzard the far pack for only one tick, then run towards the pack by the courier. That first pack will chain pull these two packs. Rank 1 Frostbolt this pack and move through the gate that leads to the live side. Once through the gate, face pull the first pack. Frost over this pack, again, jump for increased range. Run to the left towards the live side and fire blast this pack. Then you want to run the other direction around the Novid pack towards the Unforgiven boss. Blink through this pack and this will cause both of these packs to face pull. Target the ghouls in the back and counterspell them. Ice block immediately. For the last pull you want to keep your distance at the beginning. By the time your blizzard connects and the back pack chain pulls the other two, you will have plenty of distance on them. Now you want to keep this distance for when you wrap back around the Novid mobs on the second half of this pull. For this pull, you want to utilize your blizzard around a corner as much as possible. Now the way the map layout is, you can essentially LOS the casters the entire time. This will keep them with the melee and easy to kill. The only thing that truly sucks about this last pull is the camera angles through the gates. Now it takes a minute to get used to, but the area they run through is really narrow, so it's hard for you to miss the blizzard. One last thing I would like to mention is if you are low on resources, all you have to do is have the other mage cast a rank 1 blizzard while you evocate or bandage. Then you simply continue with the farm. If you have to bandage, then do it. Staying alive is way more important than your clear time. Well that's it for the video everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, do the whole shebang. Like I said, I apologize for my absence, but we are back and ready to bring you guys more guides than ever. This is Vindy. I'm out. Peace.